All right, well, let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to the class. Uh, we, we do the part here where you all get to talk. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tim Knopf. I'm a member of our Seavers Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And let's start. Hi, I'm Jackie Tim White, member of our Savior. Are you going around the corner? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jackie Tim White, member of our Savior. I'm Ellie Stinn, member of Prince of Peace, Troy, and also member of the City Council. I'm Debbie Stinn, member of the United States. That's her husband, member of I'm Larry Stinn. I'm MJ. Uh, Laurel's other half and a member here. I'm Laurel, the other half, and uh, I'm also a member here. <laughs> Roberta, I'm here. Suzanne, I'm a member here. Truthful, second time I've been a member here. Oh, so, ah, a two timer. Yeah, <laughs> uh, John, my name is John. Join the choir. We're having a great time every week. Join the choir. <laughs> I noticed you're wearing your button. I just supposed to be a button right here that says I'm an ally, but that was the last thing I uh, put on before we left the house this morning. Let's put that. Okay. Thank you. And on the far side. I'm Carlin again. My husband was sitting next to me, but I can't see. Yeah, our girls are very good. We've been members for almost a year. Oh, good. Well, welcome to our seat. Oh, there he is. Yeah. There he is. <laughs> Everything you heard is true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Finally, <laughs> 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 Shari. Yes. Oh, I'm Dennis Hap. Um, I'm sorry, we're supposed to. Oh, I'm a member here. <laughs> oh, I'm a member here. <laughs> In fact, a, a lot of us are actually members of the uh, the diversity inclusion committee, but and we were afraid that there would only be members of the diversity committee. Oh, who else is there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Lee. Yeah. I'm I'm Matt. We've been director of music uh, ministry here in our city. Okay, so we're all done. I can't no more. Thank you. Hello, Carol. Carol, say hello from over in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> over there. Okay, good. Um, today I'll be doing a lot of the introduction, and and then so you'll be led into discussion by Laura and MJ. And uh, first of all, I want to tell you what you have walked into. It's a uh, the three series class, and the way it's scheduled right now, our first class session is today. And the um, and the point of the class is to help us really live the welcome that's in our welcome statement to be truly reach out and embrace everyone in our community to make us whole. So that's that is our our. Ideal. Our um, so next week we will not have a session, a meeting, because it's it's our congregational meeting. But you folks get a special preview because we're going to be we have out of order 125 rainbow donuts to celebrate the arrival. Of Pride Month, which is June. So they'll be out. Well, I'll try to have them out before the service. And they probably don't want us walking through the crowd during the congregational meeting with trays of, of, of cupcakes. Does he done it? I meant to say, 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 I meant to Take the opportunity to get one, but that's that's how. And we also will hope to have our our ribbon rainbow out on the lawn, celebrate our our welcoming. And uh, then, according to our schedule, um, session two will be taking place right here 
um, on June 12th. And that topic for that one is looking at the Bible verses known as clobber verses used by some Christians to demean or criticize LGBTQIA individuals, seeing them in context, and also examining some affirming Bible passages. In fact, I have handouts at the end. I wouldn't call it homework, but I would call it an opportunity to look them over. And I have lots of stuff. This one is the affirming anti clobber verses, and this is taking a look in context of some of the clobber verses. And people take them out of context and they try to use them to basically to support their own prejudices and biases. And so that's that will be the major topic of our. June 12th session. And then um, on June 19th, we have Living the Welcome discussing typo, the importance of using appropriate pronouns with LGBTQIA individuals, reviewing a non binary glossary of terms, and discussing the benefits to all inclusion. Plus, we'll have a special video presentation that, um, by a transgender Lutheran. So that's how we envision things going. So why are we doing this class? Well, it started, it's this fall. Discussion, I think it was at an ed committee meeting, and he was mentioning that, I, yes, I think sir. I'm this, that among his friends, some of them had their children had come out, or their friends of their children had come out, and they weren't comfortable talking about it. The adult, the older adults weren't, because they didn't know the vocabulary, they didn't know the terms, they didn't understand it. So we started thinking, and we started looking for a glossary of terms, and we found one, and that began, and then the class grew out of that. So that's how it got started. But why? Are we doing this in the first place? Well, let's take a look. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to read it to you also, so you don't have to see it. It's it's called the Greatest Commandment, Matthew 22, 34 to 40. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. You could just see these guys planning. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Hey, Jesus, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. And that's what we're trying to do, is we're trying to properly love our neighbors. So, that's Matthew. Let's take a look at John. John 13. Jesus is sitting at the table with the last, with the, at the last several of the disciples. They've all got their little plastic things with the wafer and the tiny bit of And it's his last chance. <laughs> it's his last chance to, 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 you know, to, to make things clear than before he leaves them physically. So he says, I, just a second, I'm getting up on my hearing aids. I'm getting an Amber Alert. Yeah, I yeah, do. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I give you, I give you a new command that you love one another, just as I have loved you, and and you should also love one another. By this, everyone know will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. And then today, what did we hear? We sang. They will know we are Christians by our love. 
And then, last but not least, this is the welcome statement. Yeah, it's probably not big enough, but I was too cheap to pick a big poster board. So, <laughs> our Saviors as a welcoming community. We affirm with the Apostle Paul that in Christ there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female. And that's Galatians 3 28. It goes on, the second paragraph Christ has made us one. We are committed to extending this welcome to everyone without regard to gender, identity, sexual orientation, race, age, social economic status, disability, political association, marital status, education, or ethnic origin. God's reconciling love in Christ is at work in everyone. Okay, then that's Amen. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Let me show you. First, I have for you. I looked it up. I researched it. Our, um, let's see. I'm going to start some here. Um, it's basically the timeline. All right. The timeline for our seniors. For our what how we became a welcoming affirming church. Um, thanks to that statement. It started. You can share it. And I lost it. But here it is. It began back in 2015 with a, uh, Chris Glance had an idea and he sent out an email calling for being a member of uh, our Savior's Lutheran interested in the process of becoming a reconciling in Christ church. And we, we met for the first time September 14, 2015. And then we on the 15th, we let the, the council know what we were doing and what we intended to do. And then we met all these times. We had um we had visitors. I don't know how many remember the visitors that came from the from the other churches, Bothell First Lutheran, Magdalene Lutheran, Gethsemane. They had gone through the, the RIC process and they came and talked to us about their process. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we had a series of Three, three uh, forums that were led by Pastor Rick Covernow, who at, at that time was the executive director and the pastor of Open Doors Ministry, Open Door Ministries. Uh, pastor Rick passed away last spring, and we folded, Jackie and I and Ellie were members of the board, we folded up the organization in December, it, it had, worked, had served its purpose and other organizations were taking place. And so it ended, um, but Pastor Rick was essential in, in, in doing that. Maybe you remember the popcorn, the movie on a popcorn night where we showed the movie uh, before the Bible tells me so. All these things led up to a, uh, a strong poll that we held, I think in, uh, June of 2016, so almost a year had gone by. And uh, the straw poll, we, we had a basic welcome statement prepared, and it was passed by 80% of the people at that time. So in January of 2017, it went to the council, and our archive just arrived. Coincidentally, on RIC Sunday, uh, the January 29th, 2017, the congregation had a chance to vote on it, and they voted to approve the welcome statement that I read you a few minutes ago. So that's been, it's been over five years. And we've had a number of people added to our congregation since then. And we've also had a we tend to forget stuff. And so uh, I just wanted to make that 
particularly clear that we are committed to that and we need to live that welcome. Okay. Want another hand up? <laughs> okay. This is about the Northwest Synod. Um, Northwest Synod of, our, of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. This is their copy of their welcome statement and also an explanation down below of what is reconciling works and reconciling in Christ because they're two similar organizations. So let me start. Let's see. This. These. Our synod has been very active, which is a good thing. Yes. Yes. Um, folks that are online, as my sister mentioned, if you if you want copies of any of the documents that I'm passing out, send me an email and I will send them off to you. Okay. Um, but basically, I, I don't want to read through the whole thing, but I do want to highlight something. They're very clear about their position. The Council and Leadership of the Northwest Washington City affirms that all people are beloved children of God. We welcome people of all sexual orientations, genders, ability, races, nationalities, economic statuses, and backgrounds to join in the life of our community. We welcome all because God welcomes all, and we recognize that our differences, that uh, we recognize that our differences are gifts to our communal life. As Christians in the Lutheran tradition, we recognize that we are all saints and sinners, and we are, and we are works in progress towards a diversity. And they mentioned, and also mentioned, said the Synod got started back in 1992 when the Synod initiated uh, open door ministries. And that mentioned that it, it closed in December of last year. So, and I just wanted you to have that information at your fingertips so that you could, could see that our church and our city are committed to this and, and so are we. So that's, we want to make sure that this church is a comfortable place for everyone. Well, okay, now it's time to talk about being excluded. Now, <clears throat> some of us, probably more than others, have felt what it's like to be excluded. Um, I've been a pretty privileged guy living in a white middle class, upper 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 middle class background when I was a kid. Um, my exclusion came in the area of sports. World's worst athlete. <laughs> and even though my father kept pushing me into different sports, they didn't want me. You know, I, I started out in third base and little league. Pretty soon I was in left field. And then they couldn't get me any further away from the ball. So further and further out. But you know, it's that's nothing compared to being someone who comes to church. And then they, they say, oh, well, yeah, we, we welcome everyone. Um, and after we, after we fix you, or by the way, because of who you are and who you love, you're going to hell. That, that's real exclusion. So we're going to do an activity. We're going to have a discussion about, and then we're going to go out. I have... A jigsaw puzzle for you guys to put together. And we're going to talk about feeling excluded. And then I have some pins. And I have the jigsaw puzzle has this nice picture on one side, but you can't look at it yet. And the other side, the pieces are blank. And I want you, we want you to write down some of those feelings. And then we'll trade pieces and share what people have written. And then we'll attempt to include all the pieces of the puzzle. Then we'll flip it over and we'll see the picture that is assembled 
by including everyone's peace. That's what's about to happen next. So. Okay. Um, you want to start? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, I think that in our conversation on how to present this course, we we're trying to find a way to in literally include everyone. And what came to mind for me was that I believe that not a single person has ever not felt excluded in one way or another in their lives. And that discussion is something that will include all of us. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to bring to the table for everybody. Sorry. <laughs> um, I wanted to bring that to the table and really think about like, all of us have been excluded for a particular reason. Um, I, I mean, I, like Tim, grew up in an uh, upper middle class family and it faced exclusion throughout my life as well, on um, being part of the queer community. So, like, <clears throat> I wanted to show up here and, and just basically have a discussion around what inclusion looks like, what exclusion looks like, um, and how we can show up for everyone in our community and make them feel included and acknowledge that we all have been excluded in one way or another. And I think with acknowledging that, we also would like to state that this is not, my exclusion is greater than yours. My my experience is different than yours because my life is different than yours. That's where that comes from. But every single individual that walks this earth has felt at some point they weren't for baseball or they you know were asked to leave somewhere something along those lines and i think that the purpose is it's not just about the queer community or just about the inclusion at church it's about really trying to understand that at the core of this we have all felt some type of exclusion probably more than one um and how we can really come together as a community by understanding that feeling sort of at the deepest part of it um, so I think if you want to go into the puzzle pieces, do how do you want to go to the next round? Well, of course, what happened there, there so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so give us some examples of ways that you or people you know have felt excluded. Okay. I'll, I'll go. Someone is here. Um, <laughs> growing up in a white Anglo Saxon Protestant, family who wouldn't think this, but when I finished college, got my degree, I had my teaching credential, I started applying to school districts, I was the wrong color. I was not, they were only hiring minority, and I couldn't find a job. A few years later, I was looking for a church job, a church choir director job, and I was denied because I was a woman. They had to have a man, that was that. So, there you go. Wow. I was excluded when we first got married and I wanted a credit card. Little did we know that we were responsible. Okay, who else is the next one? Come on, guys. I have to respond. I was a little league all star. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't know where you're going. I don't believe that. <laughs> I really don't believe that. It's not like a ring. Go only thing I can say I was excluded from the Bible. I'm sure I felt excluded in probably many ways, but that seemed insignificant. But I'll tell you when I felt sort of vicariously excluded is when our son came out as gay. And um, our son had already left our church, our Lutheran church in Stanwood, and gone to the Foursquare because they were more alive for Christ. Mm -hmm. But when he came out to his church, they told him he was going to hell. Mm -hmm. And he has not been a part of the church ever since then. And mm -hmm. he's no value in the church at this point, even though um, he was so full of faith prior to that. And so whenever I see someone excluded like that, I I take it personally. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's not about me necessarily, but that's what comes to my mind first and foremost is 
um, that's real and people live that and and I don't have to live that but I don't have to put up with it either so it still hurts yeah about what he went through you know so it's gotta be so frustrating because you want to make things right for your children and when they become adults your power just doesn't extend that far. He's he's fine. He's found community and friends, and he's good. I mean, he's good with his life. He's uh -huh. not he's not feeling put upon. He just, you know, I say, well, you know, he, what about your spiritual? And he said, I'm a spiritual person, and that's good enough for me. So I I don't know that the church is ever going to get him back again. But I don't want anybody driven out of the church. And um, so this isn't a crusade for my son. It's a crusade for those to come. Um, after him, yeah, and, yeah. And, uh, and we know it happens all the time. Mm -hmm. So the four square church is a bit less because they lost his contribution. Yeah, what you hear is is that um, we love you, and Jesus loves you, and the church loves you, but you're a sinner, and we love you, and we forgive your sins, and you can never get whole status is if you've got this qualifier that you can't overcome because of who you are, basically. Mm -hmm. I found this article yesterday when I was, I was looking for an image to put on the other side of the puzzle. And it's written by a Catholic uh, priest. And it says, can you really hate the sin and love the sinner? And he thought it was interesting and remarkable that uh, he says, first of all, that phrase is not the Bible. But people say it as if it was. Yeah, uh, hate the sin, love the sinner. He says, but he's noticed that this supposedly compassionate dictum is that it's applied almost exclusively to one group, LGBTQ. So that's what apply, though. We all have to agree. In <laughs> fact, being this human being is sinful in the first place. Yeah, yeah we are all sinful. Which I think yeah. <laughs> that's probably where we're not agreeing, right? <laughs> and he says, who's more regularly labeled sinful in a world of immorality of all sorts? Greed, cruelty, lying, selfishness, racism, war laundry, callousness to the poor, and so on? Nope. It's the it's the LGBTQ members of the community. And it's it's you know, it's, I, I don't know if people always intend to exclude, but, you know, who do you talk to when you're having coffee? You talk to your friends, right? And the new folks that come in, they, you know, people are comfortable among people they know or people that they recognize. I think that's one reason why we had, in, and as this country developed, we had Communities of you know this is the Malibuli, this is this is Chinatown. That sort of thing. Because people we felt more secure that way. But if you're not in that group, then you're excluded. You get that knocked out feeling. So thank you, Dennis, for sharing this. One. Anybody else have any thoughts? Or any feelings on exclusion? I was in a church council in Pleasant Meadows, and here. And um, something came up about gays. And so I go to defend them. And the pastor said, Maybe you're in the wrong church. I'm thinking about what's happening right now at Seattle Pacific University. Mm -hmm. They they have decided to reauthorize their statement about their employees can't live a same sex lifestyle, and the students are taking exception, and they 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 want to be taught by the best people available, regardless of their sexual identity or gender, and they're like. I think they've taken over one of the buildings on campus. They're a sit in outside of the administrator's office yeah. over 72 hours. Wow. They're just like camped out sleeping in the hallway. And I find it interesting that the university is more than willing to take tuition 
from people in the LGBTQI community, but unwilling to pay <laughs> teachers <laughs> that are representative of their students. So this this exclusion is ongoing, and and so we we want to try to end it in this place. So, Carly, were you going to say something? Oh, I, 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 sorry, <laughs> <John is off. laughs> um, I think I was also fortunate growing up that um, exclusion felt sort of mundane. It was just what felt like typical um, mean girls, or you know, mm -hmm. I, I never really felt out of place. Um, being really emotional after, um, and it's also really lucky to grow up in a Lutheran church that felt um, where they emphasized love and grace. It's what wasn't until I was an adult that I knew that it's very unfair for a lot of people, and, and that was difficult for me because. I really see many people that I really love to be, um, and their heart of hearts uh, didn't truly love um, others. And that's something I'm still struggling with, clearly. <laughs> um, we, have, we have a lot of friends and family who, um, I don't think until recently we realized how little we have in common with. And that's hard because. To love others is something exhausting, and it takes a lot to be vulnerable all the time, and to um, to hear messages that sound hateful without absorbing them, and to not necessarily know what to say in return. So I think exclusion for me, and I think for that, has come later in life, where we feel that we are either not conservative enough or um, because we aren't gay ourselves that we can't possibly understand. And we don't, we'll never understand. And I accept that that's true, but it's not that we don't want to or that we don't love still. Um, so I think, you know, we say after you have children or we are in adults, it's harder sometimes to make friends when we keep friendships. And for us, that's been true because it seems like we're living in a world of such extremities and people are so vicious and angry and um, they're hurting. They're hurting and they're so frightened and it's hard to get through that, those layers of intensity. And, you know, and, and we just feel that we're very boring. <laughs> we're just, we just feel like, can we, can we just open our arms to you? And, um, you know, that's, I think it's it felt for the first time I feel really excluded, but it's not maybe the way that a lot of people have been excluded. So mm -hmm. I was talking to Matt before we came in here, and something that come up, I think, as a parent, something MJ and I have talked about previously was something that Matt was talking about, where if you may have grown up, Matt. Matt's experience was maybe growing up in sort of a more liberal household, very loving, very accepting. And then as an adult, and I don't want to speak for you, Matt, but I'm just, it's a sort of a similarity for, or a thing that I'm, I'm almost kind of putting in with what you're saying, Carly, as being a parent and why a class like this is so important. Because we can't just teach our children to love everyone and then they become adults and realize that's not what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Because then they are like, they have no idea that these injustices exist mm -hmm. and they don't know how to combat that and they don't know how to truly love the people that are being excluded or that are being targeted um, because they don't understand that it's even there. And so as parents and grandparents and educators and you know people in this community, it's our job to understand that these things exist so that not only we are using our voices in a, in a way that is truly loving, is truly accepting, is truly understanding, but that we are teaching the next generation and the generation after that how to have a voice to stand up for themselves and for the people that they love. 
Um, and I actually, there's a quote that's kind of tossed around that I wanted to read. Um, I don't know if any of you know, maybe Carly, Glennon Doyle. Um, she is an author who most recently put out a book uh, called Untamed. Prior to that, she was a Christian mommy blogger, um, a little more right-wing than she is now. <laughs> um, she left her marriage of a couple of decades and is now married to um, Abby Wambach, the U.S. women's uh, national soccer player, and has gone through an entire <laughs> awakening of <laughs> a whole shift in world, which I personally relate to very closely. However, um, something that she said, I believe last year, was, if you wish me well, but vote against my family being protected by the law, you do not love me. Thank you for understanding that to love me as yourself means to want for me and my family every good thing you want for yourself and your family. Anything less than that is less than love. So to say love, you know, the, thy neighbor as thyself doesn't just mean, well, be accepting and say, oh, I love you, but, or conditional, or you can sit in a pew, but only if you follow this type of lifestyle, but only if you are abstinent, celibate, don't bring your partner, aren't out, of, you know, maybe there's <laughs> a plethora of things, weapons, really, that are used against people that just want to come to church and worship together. And so I think, for me, that really hits hard of, it's not just saying the word love, but understanding what that means. And in order to understand that, we have to educate ourselves on the ongoing changes, growth, terminology, and what's happening, what laws are being passed and where, which there are some pretty perfect ones right now oh. that are really taking us back a lot. Um, and so knowing that, and knowing that in this room, there are 25 of us that have a voice. There are 25 of us that go out into our communities mm -hmm. and get to say, this is not right. This is not okay. And the main portion, I think, of this class is to educate us to be able to be people that can go into the community and help and make change and do what we can with our voices to teach the next generation to stand up for themselves. And that is not inclusive or exclusive of anyone. That is for everyone. Um, I can get off the soapbox now, but just what you're saying, you know, I just carry that and, and that, that it speaks to me a lot. And I think there's probably a lot of us that don't, we think, oh, I don't see color. That's not really how it should be. I was raised to not see color. I was raised to not be prejudiced against anybody. And while on the surface, it sounds nice, I'm accepting of everybody. The problem is color should be seen, right? Because we need to give respect to people who have not historically been respected. And if we don't see a difference, we can't respect that difference and that history. Um, so I think, you know, this class has, the ability for us to really dig in and i think our first being here today is kind of asking when was the time that you felt excluded so that we can look inside ourselves and feel that sort of that root kind of ickiness you didn't i didn't feel even if it was when you were five years old or you know whatever it was there's a time that's poignant for all of us um and to sit in that for a minute and think that's really uncomfortable it really doesn't feel good i really didn't like that and to take that and to use that as, you know, your little light to expand into how somebody else may feel and to do your part to um, just just be an advocate and an ally. Okay, really, I'm off the soapbox now. <laughs> well, I think about, it's not, we're not just talking about LGBT and the back exclusion. Think about Little Asian background walking, being beaten down to the sidewalk in the streets of Seattle, mm -hmm. or people who traditionally haven't been able to live in certain neighborhoods because of red lighting, because of, of their color of their skin. You know, the fact that uh, home ownership is so, uh, the percentage is so low among the African American community because that wasn't. That was intentional. That Extremely was extremely prevalent in Seattle, actually. Yeah, yeah, in Seattle. It was a, and 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 people generations after this is the red lining has ended, people are still there. We we all build up uh generational wealth and 
and uh, they couldn't because they were forced to rent. You know that they didn't have. You can't put that money in a house if you can't get into a house. Which is becoming a problem for everybody. Well, and as a realtor, I can tell you it still exists. The language is different. Um, the laws are different, but it still exists. The intention is the same. The intention is there. And think of the amount of generations that have missed out on the amount of equity, the amount of generational wealth, the amount of things that have been built through families that have been here since the beginning in you know the beginning. The beginning. Not really the beginning, but in Seattle. You know, white colonization uh, and selling homes as recently as you know twenty years ago. Right? This was still a big thing, yeah. and the fair housing laws are constantly changing, and hopefully, will continue to go in the right direction. Um, but this is it's it's very much still happening. We are not at a place where just because we put a rainbow flag outside means that everything is good. So we have a one Two yeah. puzzle. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna have to slip behind. Okay, now uh, let's see. Where are my pins? Oh, I think I left it on the brief. Can you unzip that sucker there and okay. mm -hmm. Want me to pass the box Sure, that'd be great, Jack. So you take, you take the piece and you have some thoughts about exclusion on there, okay? And the, this puzzle actually does fit. I tried it at home. So here. Okay, yeah, we're also going to figure out where you um, Here are the pens, okay? If they're not doing it, they're not. Doing and then it. what do they do once they've written? Oh, then I think what we'll do is maybe we'll share it with a neighbor and then we can read some things aloud. Then I'll get behind Marco here. There you go. We'll put them into this frame. We can the gates up us. By the way, if they don't pitch, they go. They do pitch. They go. It's just a really crummy uh, fun board. But anyway. Oh, the blank side. Oh, the blank Write some thoughts on there. Well, wait a minute. Some people have all had a chance to write. You're talking about excluded, maybe it's not a huge excluded, or how you felt, how it feels to be excluded. I mean, like it's it's to feel less than the others, right? Less than the people that exclude you. Um, it, it, it undermines, it makes you feel not so good. Right? It's just, so these are the things we want you to put down there. I know truth. Once you all had a chance to write and those who want to share here, then we'll come up and we'll put them in the bubble. We'll just eat while they're here. And the trick is that it'd be the first one up here rather than the first foot. <laughs> and uh, and we'll create the puzzle. I don't see that. This was a good idea. It was It might just not make me I'm not talking to people on Really engaged. Yeah, some folks are being exploited right now because we've run out of pens. So, all of these are going to be the same. And the folks yeah. online, if anybody wants to speak up, we can write for them. We yeah. can add a puzzle piece. Yeah. Oh, can you share one? Would you like to hold up? We have a puzzle piece and we can. Yeah, yeah. Up there, you see in the little box right there? You're right there. Oh, good. Okay. There you go. If we have extra puzzle pieces, we'll offer them to you. You can tell us what you want us to write. 
Anybody need a pen? I know. I'm not going to get two left. Uh oh. Two extra? Okay. Anyone want to do a part two? Yeah. Hey, I think that's fit, but I'm not going to sell it. So I'm not going to stand here. Yeah. So, so far we've got exclusion fields like not having an opportunity most folks have access to. Well, this is interesting. Transgender people don't belong to the LGB community. Interesting. We don't have to put it together, right? Well, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, if it doesn't fit the pieces that are there, then you just kind of leave it. It looks like that's an edge piece, doesn't it? No, Okay. No. I don't, but I do it with Emma. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what they're like. I always have to suck people out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You want to write more? Oh, yeah. I want to add more to my kids. Exactly. Yeah. You know what? Well, he can add. I'm putting you two to my kids. I'm going to add to my kids. I'm going to add to my kids. You can speak about that. That's a really good one. Yeah. 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 Y
Okay, we can't hear anything. Well, at least it stopped raining. This format, you almost need to have everybody there. <laughs> As a person online, I feel excluded right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of this we couldn't do. And they weren't giving us a chance to talk. They disappeared. Yeah. And he wasn't there to begin with. Well, he's been there most of the time. Yeah, where you know, it's not about whether you're a friend or you're a friend. They're muted. I can see the little red X. Oh, we're muted. Yeah. Oh, we're all together. Not. Whoever this is is a real busy body. Who? Whoever that is in dark. This? Has us, yeah, hasn't sat down yet. Yeah. yeah, it's neat. It's really Hey, somebody said, I don't know what it is. Like a disc. Okay. One more piece. Oh, goodness. There's not one left in the box, is there? Boy, missing piece. <laughs> oh, Karen's got it. Oh, there we go. What piece left? That's all right. Yeah, so, okay. Okay. Is it gonna go together here? And uh, let's see. Okay, lonely. Exclusion feels like not having an opportunity that most folks have access to. Exclusion feels like fear for being yourself, humiliated. Exclusion and effort from old timers. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, being excluded makes me feel anxious and make me question myself. I was raised. Okay. 
I felt excluded when my stepmother bought things for all my sisters, but never for me. I felt excluded by being included with conditions. Yeah, that's a very big one. And looking back, it was so very insignificant. Excluded, it was so very insignificant. I was excluded by a whole floor in my college dorm because my roommate turned up against me. Oh. Oh. Roommate not to have. Okay, so you all made a contribution now. Okay. Oh, there you go. Now the magic happens. Okay, so okay. everyone's been included their pieces in the puzzle. So look at you got a picture. Huh? Yeah. Flip it over without the pieces going everywhere. And when did you do that? Okay. What is it? <laughs> I see blue. Oh, there's a heart, I think. This is a stained glass window that, uh, that was in an article. I was looking, but I was trying to say what to, you know, what kind of image would represent that kind of unity. And I thought, well, why not the Trinity? So here we have it. And um, it worked. So thanks. That's the people on the. Can you turn on? Oh, yeah. So we are the image is complete because everyone was included. We are we are <laughs> intact because everyone's contribution was accepted and enforced into place. <laughs> anyway, can I make it see it? Okay, good. So Thanks for that experiment, folks. We're just about at an end. Um, I have those handouts I wanted to make available to you. This class will not again meet again for two weeks, and I thought you might want a chance to, to read over them and, and think about them. It will lead to, to a more lively discussion when you get together again. So It'll be a quiz at the beginning of the next class. <laughs> 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 I think uh, it's important to state that there you can call, contact, text, email, whomever, myself, Tim. Um, if you have questions, if you read something that's on there and you're like, I have no idea what in the world this means or why we're covering this um, prior to the next class or bring it with you. Um, the, the premise and the basis of this is not only to have some education, but to understand where we're lacking. And we can't do that without feedback from you. Um, so, you know, at any, any point during the next couple of weeks, if you have a question or a story or a thought that comes up that you would like to share or, you know, get more information around, please do not hesitate to reach out to us. So I, I want to say a word about the second session. Roberta and I are going to be uh, moderating that. And um, anyone who knows me well knows I'm not a Bible study expert. And I, this class is not intended to be a Bible study. It's a, it would be more a focus on um, what these verses mean in context or out of context. And um, an opportunity for people to share um, uh, their life experience if these have been used in, in their life. Uh, so I hope that it's going to be just a discussion about um, um, how the Bible has been used uh, in ways that don't support with um, our values, our expressed values anyway. So. So you got the anti-clubber verses, 
and the club reverses the contents, right? You got the lot those last two hand ups. Yeah. So you're all well supplied. So and hey, guess what? It's exactly 11:45. Whoa! So thanks for being good puzzle makers. Thank you for coming. Good to hear from you, and we look forward to seeing you in two weeks. But don't forget the cupcakes next week if you celebrate. Thank you. 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 Thank you.